hot a ride. Dolphins a little over a week away from the start of the season. The one and only David Perone is ready to join us. Welt and Realm, of course, proud sponsors of this segment. Call Jeff Welt, Daniel Realm. The consultation is free, by the way. Cool little uh, email I got yesterday at Big O Radio Show at Yahoo.com as I give it out every once in a while to you all. Uh, one of our listeners called Welton Rayom. It was just like a year ago, and they uh, they they were really happy with the results and the check and all that. So he was he sent me an email to thank me as they were in a car accident and and Jeff and Dan you know crushed it again. So listen, folks, whether it's bankruptcy and I know a lot of people are dealing with bankruptcy issues right now. Uh, unfortunately, because of inflation and everything going on. And, and taxes and everything, people are going into their 401ks like never before. Record numbers, savings accounts all across the country are at record lows. Okay, all this stuff can be tracked. And I know that it's going on, unfortunately. So Welton Realm has been dealing with that also. So it's not only condo damage. We tell you all the time since we're in this weather hell at times, we just got a torrential downpour. Somebody has a busted pipe. You live in a condo, townhouse. Please call Welton Rayom first. They've got the adjusters. They'll send them there, and then they will then call the insurance companies for you and attack them. Remember, the consultation is free. So you think you have a case. You're sure you have a case. You're not exactly sure, but you got questions. It happened a week ago, a month ago, a year ago, two years ago. Man, statute of limitations may not have run out. Call them, 954 966 46 46 and i'm so happy when i get a uh, a listener reaching out and thanking me for for jeff and dan because they just do incredible work all right buddy uh let's uh let's get to it uh where do you stand on uh some of these injuries because uh personally i could start off with the, with odell beckham everything i heard goes contrary to what happened Yet, Anthony Walker hasn't been on the field for a month and a half, and here he is playing. Aaron Brewer hasn't been on the field forever also, and he's going to play. And I told you that I told you that Odell and Brewer were going to play week one. Well, <laughs> Brewer's there. Walker's there. So what's going on? Because I heard he wasn't having any problems running behind the scenes. And it's Aaron, Aaron Brewer. Aaron Brewer. Aaron, Aaron, Aaron. Aaron, 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 Aaron uh, <laughs> you got to give it the southern twang. Aaron Hands and certains and these a chance and a chains. And, you know, it's just like, you know, they, they, they're always screwing with me, bro. Come on. Uh, you know, let's go. All right. Let's go. Sealer, yeah. Siler. Yeah. You oh, know, that's Sealer. Yeah. Come on. We know that one. Okay, but when he first got here, is it a siler or is it a sealer? Yeah, people were wondering, yeah. Okay, <laughs> so, you know, sometimes we zig and then there's a zag. You know, I'm just saying. So, all right. No, but seriously, Brewer hadn't been out, and I, and I kept telling you because I kept hearing, he's playing, he's playing, he's playing. And I kept hearing, Odell's playing, he's playing, he's playing. And I heard he wasn't having any trouble. I can't, I wish I can describe how he was running but I cannot describe how he's running because I promised, mm. but he was running very well. Yeah. And so I don't understand any of this and I get it. And look, I'll take the L. I got no problem with that. You know what I'm saying? But same, same people were telling me no problem. Brewer's playing no problem. Odell's playing and something happened. Yeah. And, and we've seen Odell running. We've seen him, uh, you know, do a lot of other work on the side that I, I think leads you to be encouraged. And I think that's why also it came down to the final day, as opposed to the other three that were on PUP, Bradley Chubb, Isaiah Wynn and Cameron Good, where Mike McDaniel immediately said the Monday before, yeah, we already know these guys will stay on PUP definitely out the first four weeks, but then uh, beyond that, uh, Odell Beckham Jr. He still kind of left it open for that last day. So I remember coming on with you that same day, and, and hey, I, I predicted it with you. Like, okay, I think there was a reason why uh, they they uh, separated his situation. But I think also uh, it, it came down to uh, you start 
with five or with two games in the first five days, um, and then maybe a guy that you that you is brand new to the offense but hasn't had the practice, hasn't been able to run a route with Tua Tagovailoa to this point, then uh, yeah, maybe you do want to give him the first four weeks to just say, hey, you know, you, you had an offseason procedure we, that we were aware of. If you're the Dolphins, uh, make sure you're all good, and then go ahead and 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 we need you for the long haul, not for. Um, the, the, the first four games to then see a flare up as you're trying to hurry yourself into getting incorporated in the offense. So, um, you know, my, I, I respect the way the Dolphins go about it right now. Now, I hope also that Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle are good to go for the start of the season because oh, they have to be. No, yeah, they have to be. They have to be. Yeah, you're not doing that if yeah. you know what I'm saying. They have to be. So, but here's my here's where I disagree. Okay, because. I'm sorry. One day this is going to come out. But um, when you tell me what he's doing, okay, so fine. You have two games in five days. So you play him either against the Jags or against the Bills is what you do. You don't put him on the IR. You just uh, may be inactive for one of those games. And then one of your receivers that you have on the practice squad, you activate him for that. You don't play him in five days twice. You play him once. You choose which one you want, the Jags or the Bills. And if you choose the Bills, it's a Thursday game, which still gives him 10 more days to recover for the Seattle game. Or you play him for the Jags and then rest him for the Buffalo Bills, and then he travels with you with Seattle, and he's had two weeks to rest, plenty of time. So I... The only thing, and, and here's the one thing that I've always openly admitted to everybody, it is hard to get injury information. I can get other information. I Injury information is really hard. There's something across the board in that building that they really want to get away from. Like, no matter who you talk to, they don't want to address injuries. And you see it how Greer does it in public. Behind the scenes in that building, they do the same thing. All of them. They don't want to talk about injuries. So I'm just wondering if there was some kind of a setback. That's the only thing I can think of because everything else went as planned except this. And it just doesn't make sense. And and again, if you're so worried about the crunch at the beginning, I'm an idiot. And I said, simple. You don't play them twice in five days. You, you can't have 53 active anyways. So you have guys that, that you can elevate. You can put him inactive for one of the two weeks and up another guy. And that's it. Instead of being out with him for four weeks, and now if he can run routes, if he can do things, what happens if you do suffer injuries? And now you can't, you can't play him. So if you can't play him, then that means he couldn't play. That's yeah. kind of, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying to read through the trees from what I was told and many times, and then, you know, kind of MIA lately, and then I don't hear anything. And then I start thinking, okay, the injury thing is something they don't like to talk about. So I'm oh, just, sir. so I'm just throwing that out there. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. You, yeah. Go ahead. you go ahead and chew on that. There's a lot of factors into uh, why the, they don't disclose so much injury wise. I mean, uh, first, it's, it's the players themselves, their livelihood. You know, they don't want to put their business out there. Uh, yep. for one, uh, a lot of the other injury stuff, it's because it's league mandated. So, I mean, even Mike McDaniel just yesterday, a couple of times was answering some questions with like, I, I am not mandated to answer that. The snapping, the, the, era, the, the Brewer snapping question. Is Brewer the snapping, right. Uh, Anthony Walker's situation. Um, and then we did end up seeing he returned to practice uh, later on when we had a uh, practice viewing. So, uh, and when was the last time you saw Walker at practice? Oh, it, it has to be more than three weeks. But I mean, like, no, more. Yeah, very start. Yeah, like a month. Yeah, over yeah. a month. He, yeah, yeah. He, he, he very never, started camp. Dude, yeah. he never played in the preseason. He never right. practiced in the right. preseason. He he might have practiced like the first day of of training camp or something, first or second, and then that's it. You never saw him again. All of a sudden, he's playing the regular season. Yeah. So, you know, it's 
Oh, and so he doesn't need practice and Odell. Uh, which one's more complicated, linebacker or receiver? Yeah. Now, I mean, linebacker. Then, right. Uh, now, maybe, no, well, also there's Mike McDaniel's offense. So I think uh, with all the motions, all, all the things that you need to learn as a wide receiver, maybe uh, there was some, uh, some – a little bit extra that they wanted to get a receiver as opposed to a linebacker. And maybe they felt that Anthony Walker's early training camp reps went really well, getting the mental reps, feel like he's in a good spot. And, uh, and of course he's now able to return to practice and still has a week and a half before the opener since his first day back at least. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I do like your idea with Odell Beckham, the uh, play him one game, not the other to start the season, sort of like an NBA load management type of deal. When you have a player with a back-to-back, hey, you play him one of the games, you, you don't play him the other. And uh, I think that would have worked well, uh, just fine. But uh, these guys know better than, than we do as far as just where uh, the player himself is at. And, and, and Greer told us it was the organization's call that Odell felt – he was good. He wanted to go ahead and, and, and push it and, and get out there. Uh, I could totally get that from his perspective as someone that's new to an offense. And uh, you already got people on Twitter talking about that you're doing the Will Fuller thing and you're replying to them. And you, know, not, you want to prove people not, wrong. So, that's, yeah, it's not fair, man. That's yeah, fair. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and by the way, this comes from the guy that's blocked from by Odell. Oh, yo, that you are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. I remember that. I, I just want you to know this is all coming from the guy that's blocked by Odell. Okay? So just want you to know that. You know, I'm just being objective. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, you know, whatever he has against me, I don't know, and I don't really give a shit, to be quite honest. You know? I, I, I don't know got, why he hasn't blocked the I've guy he responds to yet. I've gotten to this point in my life where I'm almost 50. I'll be 58 October 1st because i don't give a shit okay that's you know that's why i've gotten here so i don't worry about people's feelings and stuff but i am going to call it objectively one way or another and i'm going to defend odell on this one actually uh, yeah yeah as you should call it objectively i'm just surprised he hasn't blocked the guy that he keeps responding to the guy's obviously trolling him <laughs> or he's just yeah yeah, yeah yeah see he, he blocked me from the days of his giant days that i was probably you know cr criticizing him for being an idiot arguing with a with a kicking net and going off on a weekend in a playoff and you know the stupid shit that he was doing so i'm sure he blocked me years ago and that's fine whatever bro i don't care that's that's all good you're 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 here now and if you're doing the right things i'm going to defend you and if you're not doing the right things i'm going to rip your ass and uh i can only tell you that he's been impeccable impeccable okay so I don't know. I don't get it, uh, to be quite honest, because I look at Walker and I look at Bre uh, Brewer and I say, you know, come on. Yeah. Come on. Something's going, something's going on there. I don't know. I haven't been able to get down to it, uh, to be quite honest. And so, so with, Brewer, with Brewer, I feel like we've seen some positive uh, progress. Uh, just You see less uh, coverage, you know, whatever he had covering his hand you see less of it seems like he's progressed where he needs less protection over the uh the lacerated right hand uh mike wouldn't tell us whether he's been snapping yet we haven't seen him during any media viewing portion snapping but uh you know you might see him uh, just doing some hand exercises we can't get too specific but just uh, it seems like he's getting to the point where it's not just keeping the legs working as he lets a hand heal seems like he has done some stuff where he's getting more comfortable using the hand so at least that indicates uh some level of, of progress with uh with hopefully that he can uh, feel comfortable snapping the ball and we hope that it doesn't uh turn into now issue snapping week one if he's thrown in there right away after that was an issue early in training hey, i, I, I can week. only tell you what they were telling me the entire time yeah. he's playing no problem and odell's playing no problem same people Right. Same people about both guys. They're playing, no problem. They're playing. And then when I would ask about win, and, they, they were right on win. <laughs> yeah. Because the injury stuff, they, bro, they, it's like I've never seen anybody, like, it's like you threw a grenade in front of them. And they're like, oh, shit. and they're just running. You yeah. know, they don't want anything to do with any of they, they have no intentions on talking to you about injuries oh yeah yeah that is man top to bottom in that building but oh, yeah. 
you know, it's just like, eh, so, you know, and I don't know the win one. The win one looks, uh, looks yeah. like, uh, it looks like it's a little bad. He's going to be coming up on a year by the time he's, he's eligible. Cause it was October of, yeah. of uh, last year. And then, um, and, and then, yeah, the first four games would put him out at least into October this year. So, um, and, and I don't think he's going to be coming back immediately after that either. I think it, I'm just, j- just by the feel of it, you know, speculating a little bit here, but uh, it, it just, it just doesn't feel like it's, it's imminent either. Yeah. I, I mean, it's not like I can get any info on that Yeah, or yeah, or have, but I can tell you what it sounds like. It doesn't sound good. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, like yeah. they like, they don't want, they want to like stay away from it completely. So that one, the, that one hasn't, uh, that one hasn't come through. Yeah. To, to, your point, to your point, uh, just, it, it's really uh, top from the top to, to bottom of the organization, sort of yeah. like a, a policy procedure in place. The head coach talks injuries. He's the only one. So whatever Mike McDaniel discloses, I mean, even when we talk to assistant coaches, and we know they they got to know, <laughs> but yeah. but they they avoid it like the plague. If if you know there's a guy with a little bit of an injury uh, situation that you know you're not sure. When we talk to an assistant coach on Thursday, even if it's a coordinator, and uh, they're like, "No, nah, you know, I'm not touching it." So no, <laughs> no, you're you're, you're either going to get it from the agent or you're not getting it. Yeah, yeah, that's really how it on the, at least on the dolphin side. I can't tell you that's like that in 31 other buildings in the NFL. Uh, I well, I, I can actually tell you it's not because I can actually call a couple people in different buildings and get real in- injury information on certain people if I wanted to. Uh, but but here I can tell you that that's the mo top to bottom. They they just don't want to talk about injuries whatsoever. So speaking of injuries, uh, with win out, what is your level of confidence in Robert Jones? <laughs> I asked two of the same question. Well, brother, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> I got to get the. Uh, and, and and you know what? He gave a great answer. Yeah, yeah. He 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 made it like, hey man, listen, I I throw the ball quickly, so all our guys are capable of holding people for two seconds. Yeah, so I'm confident in everybody. So I like how he gave that sweeping thing that uh, it's not a huge challenge. And the most important part about that statement, okay, is Tua himself. Fuck the offensive line. Excuse me, just in case there was somebody here. Uh, I'm not worried about the platform. I was just worried if there's like a lady sitting there in the bench okay. next to her. You know. I'm offended. I'm offended. Big and, and so Thanks. screw everybody else. What I love is that Tua understands in his head. Make a decision quick, kid. Get rid of the ball. Don't hold it for four seconds because you will die. And so I like that. I like that he has that already programmed that he's going to get rid of it quickly. So, having said all of that, what have you seen from Robert Jones to make you feel good at left guard? Yeah. Hey, I, I've always been a Robert Jones guy, and, 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 and I like him personally, so maybe I'm a little bit biased, but I feel like whenever he's had to be thrown in there, he's been a, a serviceable player. He's, he's only yeah. been a backup, a reserve lineman up to this point, but um, he's been called upon. And that, that's a tough spot to, to go in and just enter a game uh, as a backup lineman and get thrown in there, maybe even cause some movement on, on the line. If it's one guy where their backup plays another position, it could be like Eichenberg, who's uh, slotted to be right guard with uh, everyone healthy, but he has to be the backup center to Aaron Brewer, slide over there, when, you know, the master of multiplicity, as uh, as Mike McDaniel has called him. So uh, so both for him and for, for Robert Jones. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I feel just confident in that they'll, they'll do what, what needs to be done in this offense. And – I know uh, it's it, it is a popular thing to go ahead and, and and be down on these linemen, but end of the day, yeah, last year we went in with very similar concerns, uh, including with Austin Jackson, who then turns out to be uh, a, a, a tremendous. Halfway through the year, he he's a, a revelation. He, he gets uh, this contract extension, uh, so he got that taken care of. After there was so halfway many through the that. year, he was worth the draft pick. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, and it took until year four. Uh, to to really see it, and then now, hey, now you feel pretty good about him. Uh, not saying it'll work exactly that same way for Liam Eikenberg, who the team had to trade up in the second round the following year uh, to get. Uh, and Robert Jones, hey, he's made his way as an undrafted guy, so uh, he he's always been an underdog. Uh, he carries that chip on his shoulder, so I, I like the way he approaches things, and I think he's had a really solid camp. 
and, um, and and I like him there at the left guard spot. And especially, like Tua said, for what's needed in this offense, Tua gets the ball out quick. Uh, yeah. These guys can hold the blocks for two seconds. Now, if interior offensive linemen, if, if you're not holding the block at all, then that's where the rush comes at the quarterback quickest is through the interior. So uh, you do need a, a, at least to hold it for a little bit. But uh, And by the way, that's, that's you know, if we're going to be honest, that's Robert Jones' weakness, pass protection. Sure. Yeah. That's where he has struggled. That's where he needs to improve. He's actually a road grader. He's actually really, mm -hmm. really decent in the run that if it's a run play, he can get his hands – on people and he can push people so because he's a tough guy bro he's strong man too you know and, and what i like also for robert is that armstead is playing in the first game with him so he's going to have him on the left side he's going to have i know he's not experienced in this offense but at least he's an experienced lineman in a, in brewer at center there so that will help out robert in 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 a sense where armstead could help him out and give him some tips along the way and that kind of stuff and so uh, I'm sure they'll have their own little signals for certain things and all that kind of stuff. So that's going to help him a lot. I'm going to be interested and focused on Robert on those passing plays and see how he does in pass pro, because that's really where if you see him put it this way, let me let me let's let's play chess now. OK, because that's what we like to do on this show. We like to play. There's checkers and there's chess. We all assume Isaiah Wynn has the job when he comes back. Nobody over there? Okay. That's bullshit. That's complete bullshit. Because if Robert Jones establishes himself at left guard and is able to pass pro as good as he can run block, and he's more durable than Isaiah Wynn, and he gets in some kind of a groove over the next month, month and a half. Te jodites. Te jodites. And if Isaiah Wynn needs to find out what that means is, my man, you're headed to the bench permanently from here on out. That's so, not a direct translation, but... <laughs> uh, what? That's not a direct translation to te jodites. Nah, nah, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. You yeah know. In other words, you, you're screwed, buddy. He's taking over your spot. Is that better? Is that a better trade? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. this, you're screwed, buddy. <laughs> you're screwed, buddy. They, they took. So that's the other thing about this storyline here, you know, which is a good storyline for you in the paper. Robert Jones, could this be an audition, or could this be a permanent solution? You know what I mean? There, I ha I helped your headline guy too, by the way, right there. Uh, also, okay. And so, you know, seriously, don't you think that this, for Robert Jones, it's not like he's taking over some guy that he's not taking over for Teron Armstead at guard. No, he's taking over for a guy that played seven games in his history here for the Dolphins. That doesn't mean you own the job. Exactly. And it was a competition. Remember last trading camp 2023 that uh, all of those guys were in. Robert Jones included Liam Meikenberg. Yep. Lester Cotton, again, all these same guys uh, that, that returned, that Isaiah Wynn ended up winning over them. Uh, and, yeah, you had the Dan Feeney, who then he got released then, and then uh, sort of like Jack Driscoll uh, this year, he also was part of the competition, lost out, and now he's out uh, for, from the Dolphins as well. But, yeah, Isaiah Wynn was a guy that was still – he had to earn that job last year, played seven games. And I remember I was always kind of baffled that I, I felt a lot of the fan base maybe that's not – plugged into his what, Isaiah Wynn's injury going into training camp. They were, they were kind of like locking him in as the left guard and saying, Oh, it's competition at the right guard spot. I was continuously writing. No, it's both guard spots are, are a full fledged competition. And we know nothing about Isaiah Wynn uh, as we were entering training camp. And we still haven't even seen him practice because he's still going to be on PUP. We might've seen him on the side here and there, but then even then uh, after well, at one point he disappeared from, from even that. So uh, it, it was a, a serious injury that he, he suffered clearly to the quadriceps and one that maybe has led to a setback. Mike McDaniel wouldn't tell us for sure or has led to some uh, other muscle. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it, it's had its ramifications. And right now we don't know what there is uh, in Isaiah Wynn uh, as he will return. And and even Butch Berry, uh, offensive line coach, and the, the, all the off offensive coaches will have to see what he looks like for several weeks uh, as he uh, ramps back up, whenever that is, if it happens. 
Uh, so, yeah, you cannot slide Isaiah Wynn back in. And, and Robert Jones, if he's solid, he could really just hold on to this spot for sure. Uh, by the way, on Tuesday when they went down to 53, it was Tuesday, right, when they went down to 53? Yeah. And then the shocker was Tanner Connor. Mm. Um, and, again, this is all before Mike McDaniel said anything. Uh, I uh, I was on a show, and uh, and I said that, they kept Tanner Connor because he's also a wide receiver. He's a former wide receiver. And because they're short on wide receivers, they could actually use Tanner Connor as a wide receiver. And you can imagine that if you have Hill and Waddle on the outside, and then you've got Janu and Connor running inside, you know, that's, that's a pain in the ass. Uh, Tanner Connor actually might be faster than Janu Smith. You know, I, I don't think people realize how fast Tanner Connor is. And sure enough, Mike McDaniel yesterday in the press conference kind of talked a little bit about that. Your thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he has that background and then you, you're short at the position. So uh, you can make up for lack of depth at one position as you make your initial 53 and shape your, your roster uh, with a guy who has that versatility. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, good for Tanner Connor now getting another shot after he made the roster his uh, first year uh, as an undrafted rookie, and then he had some injuries in, in the offseason in between. But uh, then was and, and also that first year, and then was on a practice squad member. You could tell the Dolphins still wanted to keep him around and felt there was a there was a solid project there to to build upon. So. Um, good for him now to, to get back uh, on the spot. He made some plays throughout camp, but then uh, I wasn't so sure. I, I mean, I thought he, he wasn't going to be on the 53, uh, to be frank, but uh, especially after he had been in the red jersey, uh, had some injuries at the end. I thought maybe that was kind of like his shot, and then he wasn't available. But uh, the Dolphin staff uh, believes in him, and then you get a guy who could be a taller receiver at a position where you're short. And then also you pick up the, the Grant Dubose kid uh, off of Green Bay's uh, 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 training camp roster. So uh, another guy who can be at, at 6'2", a more physical, uh, bigger pass catcher, which is something that the uh, the receiving core lacks, especially when the active – and you sent Eric Azucama, uh to the practice squad initially, but it, so especially when your active roster receivers are Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, Braxton Berrios, and, and Malik Washington, which is all – I mean, they're, they're all right there with me in terms of height, you know. So it's, right, it's, yeah. it's one of the shortest uh, – it's, it's, it's got to be the shortest receiving core in the NFL for sure. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. All right, what do you got going on in the uh, Sentinel so folks can check you out? Yeah, actually, I mean, uh, planning on, on enjoying a nice weekend where I, I don't write too much, but I do plan on uh, writing a feature on Andrew Meyer, the undrafted uh, rookie lineman that made the roster. So uh, get to know him uh, a little bit. And uh, and also just uh, wrote on this uh, breaking news as uh, Jeff Darlington posted about uh, Mike McDaniel getting it yeah. extended. So uh, you know, as, as I'm sure you you had uh, covered uh, before, I, I yeah. hopped on. Yeah, uh, put, yeah, put yeah. I, I I quickly I just said this proves that you know Stephen Ross is committed. You send yeah. the message out that your your coach is comfortable, but still, still, if Mike McDaniel doesn't get it done this year. This becomes the hot seat year next season. And also, Stephen Ross has to be willing to eat the same contract he just dished out. Yeah. Because in a couple, in a couple of years, if, if he doesn't show the results, they're going to be forced to make a change and eat a lot of that contract. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, I, I love I love everything Mike McDaniel is doing. Uh, and, and with this roster, though, yes, the results need to show in the playoffs because this is a roster – that uh, when healthy, and I know we haven't seen it healthy at the end, when healthy should be uh, competing at a greater level, uh, advancing in the playoffs, and going and challenging Buffalo uh, to win this division and not blowing a three-game lead with five weeks remaining, which would have given them a home game to start the, the postseason. Instead of frigid Kansas City, you could go on and on. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's time. It's time. This season is all about winning the playoffs, so – Set yourself up to be able to win the postseason and actually start winning in the postseason. Yeah, so it's an interesting dynamic. Stephen Ross is willing to give the contract to show stability, yeah. but he's also got to be willing to eat that same contract in the short yeah. term if he doesn't turn it around. So hey, follow my Twitter. Way, huh? Oh, 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 just to wrap that up, same way Mike McDaniel showed confidence in Tua to get him to be this next level Tua. Now this is also yeah. the owner reciprocating that to his head coach. I'm going to show you the confidence as well. Like, you're not on my hot seat. Let's make that clear. 
Um, but now he'll have to now reciprocate that and show the results on his end the way Tua did for him and so on. Amen. All right, follow him on Twitter at David Faronis underscore. Better yet, subscribe to the South Florida Sun Sentinel. David, have a great Labor Day weekend, my friend. I appreciate you. Yes, sir. Thank you. You too. You got it. Welton Rayom, 954-966-4646. The consultation's free. Tell them that Big O sent you. I promise you, Jeff Welt, Daniel Rayom will take care of you. Our number one is done. Our number two starts. And we will start it off with Manny Navarro and the Big Cheese NIL and Recruiting Report next. This is the Big O Show.